Okay, I brought out a uh, number four synthetic sable, and I'm going to come across the farm with a very soft touch to attempt to fuse together some of the roughness, but at the same time, I don't want to get rid of the vigor altogether. So it's just dragging it across, almost like putting on makeup. If there's any women watching this. Very similar to that sort of thing. Just dragging across, softening. And then I'll probably go back in with some uh, bigger strokes on top. See, this area right here is very transparent. See, that did help. And uh, some of the alizarin got onto my brush here and it's dragging across. But it's just, it's giving it a little bit more of a unified look. And now since I have this brush out, I'm going to go up into some of the shadow sides of the cherries. And you just pull the paint down and around a little bit. Just quiet down some of the strokes. See, if you have the I mentioned this before, if you can get the passive contrasted against the active, it works so much better. Like right here, I want to keep it quiet. And then have all the impasto energetic brush strokes over on the light side. And what that does is it makes the form more dynamic. Same thing down here, the shadow side. Sort of soften that. So these are those final touches. So when, one men when someone mentions to you, uh, well, how do you get all the detail? You have to do everything that we've done already to get to this point where you can suggest detail. Otherwise, the detail has no context. It's like trying to put beautiful siding on a home without having the foundation set first. You gotta have, you gotta have some context. Or like in sculpture, you, you need that armature, that wire frame armature before you can attach the clay or plasticine. And since we have this brush, I'm going to come across and quiet down the top plane right over here in the shadows. Maybe drag right across. Look at that. If I come right across the cherry, it softens. That worked out pretty well. Now, I may try this up in the negative space a little bit in a minute. Let's see over here. If I can get that brush to sort of a few bristles, like three bristles, just to attach themselves to that highlight, I can pull that down a little bit. And bring some of that tone down into the dark side just to unify it. Let's see right here. I'm going to soften this edge here a little bit. Merge it across, come across. How much to do does take experience. Right, right there was a good move, getting that gray to sort of shimmer a little bit. I'm going to mix up a little bit more uh, grayed blue. I want to go in and uh, work on some of the highlights towards the uh, back sides of the cherries. So here's a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue with some uh, brown gray in it. And then I'm going to come over here and mix up a little bit of alizarin. And I tend to, uh, as I mentioned, look for families of color 
So here we have this blue, then the red, then the red, blue, violet. And they all sort of fuse together and create interesting tonalities. And then, you know, you have to realize that when you go down into that area with your brush, you're being really inventive with uh, creating further tonalities. Sometimes you have happy accents. All right, so I'm using the uh, synthetic sable again to sort of fuse in some of these uh, modular brush strokes that I use to, uh, you know, set up the uh, secondary planes. Artists like uh, Rembrandt, Chardon, Velasquez, Titian. I mean, all the painters, many of the painters prior to the 20th century and painting motifs like this would spend considerable, would spend a considerable number of hours contemplating the, you know, the specificity of the forms and really working to, uh, you know, refine the forms and at the same time maintaining the integrity of the paint surface. A few final touches on the stems and uh, then we will uh, call it a completed painting. I'm looking at some of these uh, stems up here and there's a little more yellow highlight on the side I'm using actually a tinted yellow. It's in a few key areas. Sort of have to snap, you have to do like a snappy paintbrush to get it. There we go. Right there. Down here we've got that one. That one's pretty good. Here. Right here. See how that, that came out a little bit thick. So what I'm going to do is just soften it a little bit. There we go. Sometimes it doesn't take that much. And then with a larger brush, bring back some of these ends. One final mark. I want to have a little bit of a uh, highlight on the edge. So I have the paint gathered up. I'm just going to hit that edge right here. And then if it goes too thick, what you do is you take another small brush and you sort of cut it down a little bit by painting along the bottom of the stroke. There we go. Now we're done. Beautiful. Well, it's been a lot of fun having everybody here in my studio today and uh, I hope that you got a lot out of this uh, demonstration. I attempted to make it a little bit more comprehensive and uh, I hopefully uh, answered some of those questions that you may have had regarding uh, some of the concepts I've presented in some of the prior DVDs or if, you're, if this is the first one you've purchased, I hope that uh, the various concepts I've presented uh, assist you in becoming a stronger painter. And if you've painted for a number of years, there's no end to how much you can uh, learn. Uh, so once again, good luck. Uh, and remember, having fun is the most important thing. That's what painting is all about. If you don't enjoy it, there's no sense in doing it. And as I mentioned before, at any point, if you have suggestions as to future DVDs I can introduce, uh, different topics, uh, concepts, uh, feel free to uh, email or write. I'd love to hear from you. Until the next time, goodbye and uh, have a great time. <laughs>